Hello, welcome to the banqueting table. My name is Diana Green, and I'm so glad that you decided to join me for making the Proverbs personal. Today, we're going to delve in just a tiny bit into Proverbs chapter 15. We've already talked about Proverbs chapter 5 and Proverbs chapter 10, and today is the turn for Proverbs chapter 15. And I just want to kind of give you an idea of where we're going to go. And the name of this session is the pH of the tongue. And I almost named it, I think it's the gap band. You dropped a bomb on me, baby. I almost did, but I didn't. Okay. The pH of the tongue. So go ahead and turn to Proverbs chapter 15. Get your items that you're going to need to jot some notes down as the Holy Spirit begins to speak to you. And let's put our hands on our heart and on our belly or in the air, whichever uh, makes you more comfortable. And let's um, pledge our allegiance to the Lord. Okay. And that goes like this. I pledge allegiance to the Lord with a united, undivided heart, and to the gospel on which I stand, one member of his body, with liberty in the spirit for all. Amen. All right, so let's get prepared. As I was getting ready for this message, I, of course, I had to do a little bit of research, and um, the name of the message kind of tells it all, the pH of the tongue. So obviously, I had to do a little bit of research about pH. And what I found out is that those letters pH refer to the potential for hydrogen, the potential for hydrogen. Well, I'm sure you're thinking, as I did, when I saw that, I immediately thought about a bomb, a hydrogen bomb. And so I carried that thought a little bit further, went and checked out the atom bomb and um, Hiroshima, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And I tell you, when I read about um, that incident and how many people were affected um, it just really broke my heart. I just began to weep because I was correlating it to Proverbs chapter 15 and the title of this message, the pH of the tongue and the underlying title, you dropped a bomb on me. And it just really made me stop and think about how much pH is in my tongue, how much acid is really in my tongue, in the words that I speak, and maybe in the way that I say things. And that might have you thinking along those same lines too, because we don't want to be dropping bombs on people, at least not on purpose. The purpose of a bomb really is to destroy for the most part. Yeah, they use, um, and they use um, detonation devices and bombs and things like that for for good reasons as well, for um, uh, industrial reasons and things like that. But we are talking about the pH of this member right here and how not to turn it into a bomb. We do have other choices. So the goal is to have a pH that's slightly acidic and slightly neutral, but not enough to do any damage on either end, right? Our human cells in our body have a 6.8 pH, so that's slightly acidic. And then in our blood, we have a 7.4 pH, which is slightly alkaline. And so you can see in our body that the idea is to have a balanced pH within the body, right? And we can take that same thought and try to have a balanced pH in our mouth and with our tongue. And as we search the scriptures or we make these proverbs um, personal, you will begin to see, hopefully, that things are beginning to shift inside of you. And, um, and in your speech as well. So that's basically what we're going to focus on today is how our speech can alter situations depending on what that speech is or whether it's more alkaline or whether it's more acidic and whether it has the potential to uh, produce hydrogen. So let's look at Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 1. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 1. I do want you to read the whole book of Proverbs 
chapter, the whole book, the whole chapter 15. But today we're going to focus just on Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 1. And then I'm going to share an example from the scriptures of what this uh, pH of the tongue looks like and the damage that it can kind of hold off and, and waylay, okay? So Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 1 simply says, A gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. A gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words makes tempers flare. Okay, so that was um, from the New Living Translation um, out of my study Bible. But I want to look at Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1 in some other uh, versions. And the Amplified Classic says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The um, contemporary English version says a kind answer soothes angry feelings, but harsh words stir them up. We're going to look at that in just a moment. And then the English Standard Version says a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. We can see the difference between alkaline and acid, right? The Good News Version says, A soft answer putteth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. I think that might have been the Geneva Version. The Good News Translation says, A gentle answer quiets anger, but a harsh one stirs it up. And obviously then the King James, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The Message Bible puts it like this. We're in Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 1. And the Message Bible puts it like this. A gentle response diffuses anger, but a sharp tongue kindles a temper fire. I like that. A gentle response diffuses anger, but a sharp tongue kindles a temper fire. Let's see what else we can find here. Uh, let's see, a lot of them pretty much talk the same way, but let's see. Um, the Jewish Bible says, A soft answer turneth away kama, which is wrath, but harsh devarim, which is words, stir up anger. And let's see, the Wycliffe. The Wycliffe translation says, A soft answer breaketh ire, <laughs> and hard word raiseth strong vengeance. I like that. A soft answer breaketh ire, and hard word raiseth strong vengeance. And then finally, the Young's translation says, uh, the Young's literal translation says, a soft answer turneth back fury, and a grievous word raiseth up anger. A soft answer turneth back fury. You ever experienced that? And a grievous word raiseth up anger. So again, that's Bible Gateway, and you can go there, type in a uh, passage, and then, depending on the length of the passage, you have the option of seeing it in all of the English versions. Um, to Just to compare what the other uh, versions of the, or translations and versions of the Bible have to say of that, that particular passage. But here again, the New Living Translation, a gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. Now remember, the purpose of this lesson is to make Proverbs chapter 15 personal, specifically Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1, for the reason of preventing a bomb to be in our mouths, right? Of lessening the potential of hydrogen with the words that we use and the way that we use them. So that with that said, I want to give an example here in Judges chapter 8. Go ahead and turn your Bible back to Judges chapter 8. 
Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Is, is it Joshua? <laughs> I don't know if I memorized. Joshua, Judges. <laughs> Judges chapter 8. Judges chapter 8. Now this, I, I feel like this example, this reference that's given, according to first, uh, 15, Proverbs 15 and verse 1, this example that's given, I think, speaks well of what Proverbs 15 verse 1 looks like in action, right? Um, with the viewpoint of being more alkaline and less acidic okay so having less potential to blow something up all right so um judges chapter 8 starting with verse 1 judges chapter 8 starting with verse 1 um so let me just give you a little bit of background there had been a war in the old testament there's a lot of wars and there's a lot of um ire and there's a lot of wrath there's a lot of harsh words there's a lot of anger between um the different communities of warriors so to speak and specifically the children of israel they fought amongst each other often <laughs> does that sound like anybody you know any families you know they fought against each other often so anyway they there had been a war and um, now it's all over, but there's still some issues to be dealt with. And in Proverbs chapter, I mean, Judges chapter eight, verse one, um, here are the people of Ephraim coming to get uh, Gideon. Then the people of Ephraim asked Gideon, why have you treated us this way? Why didn't you send for us when you first went out to fight the Midianites? And they argued heatedly with Gideon. In other words, why didn't you call us to come and join into this battle? Okay. But here's Gideon. So these guys, their tongue is full of acid. They're ready to fight. They're ready to drop some verbal bombs, right? And they argued heatedly with Gideon. So this clearly went on for a while you ever had anybody just argue heatedly with you i mean they just don't seem to want to wind it down well that's what's happening with gideon and but gideon replied in verse two what have i accomplished compared to you aren't even the leftover grapes of ephraim's harvest better than the entire crop of my little clan of abiezer God gave you victory over Oreb and Zeb, the commanders of the Midianite army. What have I accomplished compared to that? When the men of Ephraim heard Gideon's answer, their anger subsided. In other words, what he was saying, and you probably already got, got a hold of this, but what he was saying, he's got these men, this army, literally, that has approached him and has given him what for, because he didn't do what they expected him and wanted him to do. And, and he, they weren't able to join in the victory. Okay, let's just, that's just really what the real deal is. We missed out on the loot. We missed out on the victory. We missed out on the hoopla. We missed out on all of it. You didn't even call us to come along. And Gideon's like, what, what have I done compared to you? So they're all up here, all acidy, all acidy. And Gideon is right down here, right in the neutral zone, talking about, you know what, you guys, you did so much more than I could ever do. That Just look back and see what you accomplished, how God helped you. Yes, he helped me too, but look at what how he helped you accomplish your battles. And so he soothed them with that speech he sued them like you yeah, they're like yeah we are we're some bad mamma jammas yeah we are we are oh you're right gideon we did win we did do this we did do that so he just simply had the wisdom and that's the other thing about a gentle answer is full of wisdom generally speaking but he had the wisdom to remind them of the victories that they had already had and that his victory was really just no big deal compared to everything that they had done. And it settled the issue for them. 
A gentle answer turns away wrath. What did that one say? It, it puts a halt to the ire, <laughs> you know, the, the ire, not the irony, but the ire, the fire that uh, would want to come out through the ire of a person's mouth. These guys were full of ire, or err, and Gideon, because of the wisdom of God and because of his relationship with the living God, he was able to appease them. He was able to appease them. And that's one of the um, one of the ways that Bible Gateway puts it. Um, a gentle answer appeases. A gentle answer turns away wrath. A soft answer turns away wrath. A gentle response diverts anger. So he diverted their anger in such a smooth way with his alkaline tongue or his neutral words. He diffused their anger in such a cool way. The ICB says a gentle answer will calm a person's anger. And that's exactly what Gideon did. He gave a gentle answer and it calmed their anger. So that's the example that I wanted to share with you today. I know it's a little short and that's okay. Proverbs chapter 15 has a lot to say about the pH of the tongue. So I hope that you will continue to just roll through it, meditate on it, think about it. How can you apply it to your life so that you don't go around dropping bombs on people? but you're more neutral, even keeled, full of equilibrium and um, a place of wellness and wholeness. Thank you for joining me at the banqueting table. Again, my name is Diana Green. And until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you well.